Hi! Hello! How are you guys? Yes, yes, I have to be at least five minutes late. Tis true. <laughs> if you're new, if you're new to the live stream. Um, hi, how is everyone? Just getting everything going here. I was kind of watching some of you guys chat as I got ready. We were actually doing a, we were participating in the, the yelling and the making of the noise for the essential workers at seven o'clock. So, um, maybe I should go live so you guys can hear that, but I'm not quite sure if you'd be able to hear it as well. Um, okay. So first of all, I want to tell you what I'm drinking. I am drinking vodka. Okay. Cause like that's, listen, I have, we have, we have, um, Jameson and we have vodka and that's what we got and wine. So I decided, Ooh, dear God almighty. That is just not cute. Just a nice old, nice big old lipstick mark on there. Um, okay. So right now I am drinking Tito's, but I got this at the store today. This is a rose lemonade from Fentiman's traditional botanical beverage with pure rose extract. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to mix this in with vodka and it's actually so delicious and refreshing. Mm, it's just right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Teresa Byers is here. Oh, yay. I'm off tonight for my essential crazy ass job. So tired, but I hope to see you live. Yes, Teresa's here. Kim McConnell, we're doing breakfast for dinner, so I'll be drinking a mimosa. That's so funny. We did breakfast for like early dinner, late lunch, more of a late lunch yesterday. Um, Bonnie is here. Allie is here. Jerry is here. Momo Kitty is here. Ms. Robbie Lou. Melissa H. Heather Willis. Bonnie Zinn said, hey all, drinking wine and cooking beef bourguignon tonight. Gonna have the live on in the background. Oh my goodness, fancy. Julia Child times. Donna Fry is here, hi. Amber Unruh, hello from Kansas. Big glass of wine and ready. Peggy S is having Vidal Blanc and homemade meatballs. Well, excuse me. That sounds delicious. Carolyn Wilson, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Gin and tonic here in Dallas. Yes. So if you guys could all kindly give this a thumbs up, I would so appreciate you guys are so good at that. I know I probably don't have to remind you at this point, but I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna. Ooh, dewy forehead sitch. Let's, um, let's put some powder on that baby. <laughs> Just a little. I mean, it's it's a nice dewy glow. It's fresh, but can't be too fresh. Let me see if I can kind of. All right. I'm sorry. I'm this person right now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's better. That's better. I feel better about that. Let me also turn the light down. That might actually help. Um, let's see. Jerry Morrison said she was number five on the thumbs up today, everyone. Jerry, Jerry is committed, committed. <laughs> Cece asked me if I was checking that Wi-Fi right before I came on. You best believe it. I checked it at least four times, at least. Okay, so Sassy Red Fly Girl said hello to all the great stirs. Did, did we name... Do we do you think of a name for my subscribers? Is that what it is? Is a great stir? That's kind of cute. <laughs> Bonnie C, I thought coming in late I'd be on time. Or Bethany C, sorry. Shade. Shade. Um 
Lon White, I love that. Kate the Great fans are greatsters. Listen, I can't stop you from naming yourselves. If that's what you want, that's what you want, okay? I'm putting it in your hands. Um, Kate Puglia, hello, happy Monday, everyone. I have some Sterling Vineyards Pinot Noir and I'm ready and waiting, cheers. Uh, Jennifer Gould, hi everyone. Jen from Canada with an ice cold crown and Coke Zero, okay. Okay, I haven't even gotten to the part where I've entered here. Let me see. Yvonne, hi Randy, Kate, are you a little OCD on the Wi-Fi? Yes, ever since I went live one time and wasn't on Wi-Fi. Yes, so now I'm always like, is it on, is it on, is it on? Um, let's see. Tara Ball, thank you so much for the distraction. Today is the ninth anniversary of losing my 18 month old son. Sorry to be a downer. Oh my goodness gracious, Tara, I'm so sorry. So sorry. I'm sending all, all the good thoughts your way. Um, all the good thoughts. Jennifer Gould. Oh, Jennifer Gould is letting people know about how Super Chat works. Okay, so let's see. So to start things off, I told you what I'm drinking. I, I journeyed into Harlem today when it was raining cats and dogs to get groceries because I know this sounds weird, but I, I like that. I like going out on like gray, rainy days. Also, no one else is really out at that time. So I kind of enjoyed it. I'm kind of a weirdo. Um, as always, you guys know about Super Chat. Great way to support my channel. Love it. Um, and Randy is going to, instead of me constantly like repeating about my Venmo and PayPal information, you also have that option to send what you would send through super, super chat through my Venmo or PayPal. And he is going to go ahead and give you that account information throughout this in case that's something you want to do. No one has to do that, but this is what I will say. Last time there was a lot going on because I did like masks and I, I was very <laughs> distracted applying masks and taking them off. And I missed some of the Venmo PayPal, um, situations that were happening and I felt terrible because I really really want to shout those people out so I'm going to be better about getting those notifications seeing them because I want anyone who um sends anything to support my channel to absolutely get a nice a nice shout out that they deserve so I'll try to keep my eyes up down and up at the same time um I also want to start this off by saying, now this is something that I mentioned last time we talked about like affiliate links and stuff like that, um, which always helps my channel. But the number one thing I would say, if you don't or can't or whatever, don't, don't want to send, um, a super chat or what have you, there's a really, really easy way to support my channel, anyone's channel who you enjoy, and that is to share their stuff share and so i would say like pick out if you if you wanted to no one has to but if you wanted to you could pick out like you know between like three to five of my videos that you love and share them share them with one person post them on social media whatever and that really really helps it's honestly worth the most out of anything is sharing so i just want to put that out there maybe a little homework assignment, maybe you pick out three to five videos, maybe you share them. Um, let's see. My dad, my mom and dad are here. Hi, dad. Hi, mom. CC in giant caps put buy from her links too. Yes, yes, if you can. I always link everything, including I will go back like after a live stream and I will 
link anything I've talked about or if people were asking about what makeup I was wearing, I try to link all that in my description box, which is located underneath the video, if you didn't already know. I am wearing this top that my mom sent me. Thanks, mom. I feel like a very sort of sexy mariachi band musician person. <laughs> um, it's really cute. It's really cute. My mom sent me like a bunch of off the, to off the shoulder tops because she knows I, how much I love them. Georgia Colster, I always forget about sharing. Georgia, don't forget about sharing is the most important thing. Allie, you look a bit 70s tonight with the eyeshadow and the cool blouse. Yeah, I am giving you like a very retro situation. I don't know. The, the eyeshadow I'm wearing is something I talked about. I think I talked about my last live stream because I was wearing it in a more subtle color. I was wearing the Glossier Ace sky wash which is their newest makeup product um i was wearing it in this sort of subtle um warm taupe color called palm but i also got because how could i resist i got it in the shade pool oh no and i used that um the other shade in my in one of my most recent videos but look at how pretty this is and it's so easy to apply. You just pat it on. I don't put any sort of an eyeshadow base on. And then this, with this particular shade, I used my finger because I, a brush kind of like took the pigment out of it too much. But it's really pretty. I mean, I love just like a powder blue retro situation. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, d details on the top. The top is from Shine. It's S-H-E-I-N. Um, it's this company that makes really cute, trendy clothes for like next to nothing. I think this was probably $10. Mm. Let's do a cheers. Cheers. Ooh, that is so refreshing. Refreshing. Um, amazing NDN, serving Mrs. Roper in the best way possible. Thank you. I will take it. Um, Jennifer Gould, Kate, we're very glam today. I love the earrings. These earrings are from Forever 21, like a decade ago. No joke. I think I, I haven't worn them in a decade. And then I was like, well, I'll just I'll give it a whirl. Um, Emily Sales or Salas, I never know. Kate, do you watch Angelina, um, Angelina Nyquist? She is having an Aperol spritz in a recent video, or she was having an Aperol spritz in a recent video and it looked so yummy and refreshing that I made this, it made this non-drinker want to start. I didn't see her drinking that, but that sounds delicious, delicious. Rick Clark is here. Rick Clark is in the house. Brent Clark, Marco polled me today and told me that I needed to buy the Dominique Cosmetics skin glosses. And she had them on and she looked like a damn hot angel baby. And I full on went online and bought one because of how she looked in her Marco Polo. <laughs> so... Thank you, Britt. Um, let's see. Michelle Tina Hero is here. I did my skincare last night with dermabrasion, microneedle, and mask. Whoa. Whoa. That's a lot of skincare in one night. How does your skin feel today? Does it feel good? Audrey at home is here. Good evening. I'm digging the lip. Thank you. I'm wearing Pat McGrath on the Lerps. I'm wearing Twilo, which is like this bright coral shade. And then I'm wearing, I've mentioned this so many times, but this is my favorite, so far my favorite lip gloss 
It is Pale Fire Nectar Pat McGrath. So good. Um, Molly O'Hara, you look seriously stunning, stunning in every vid during this pandemic, Kate. Unreal. Well, thank you. But I want you to know that I don't look like this all day, okay? Like, you should have seen me going out today. I looked... I'm giving you just like a sweatshirt with a leather jacket with like a men's baseball hat with a mask with no makeup with sweatpants with biker boots. Okay. There's no, <laughs> I get, this is my reason to get dressed up because of you guys. So, um, People are talking about some situation I don't know about. I'm sorry. Wow, you guys are always up on like the YouTube news and I don't know anything. I'm an idiot. People are asking about people not getting um, credit for Han Solo. I've heard the YouTuber links to Sephora aren't going to be giving people anything with everything going on at Sephora. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm sure other people can speak to that. Um, I use both Magic Links and Reward Style. So um, use them anyway. Do you know what? Use them anyway. And if we don't get a damn cent, we don't get a damn cent. But at least you tried. You know what I'm saying? Better off red. I'm loving the makeup look tonight. Thank you. I'm trying to branch out. I'm trying to try new things because I'm getting really bored. <laughs> Kate, Renee Klein, Kate, you couldn't look bad if you tried, girl. Renee, Holly, $25 Venmo, did some shopping for good molecules through your links today. She, she sent me two little clinking glasses. Thank you so much for the Venmo. See, I'm on it, I'm on it. I'm not gonna miss any. Um, I can look bad, Renee, you're wrong. I love you, I love you. But you should see some of the Marco Polos I make for, <laughs> Sarah and Michelle and Britt Clark, um, I look crazy, crazy. Kate, your eye, sh Emily Sales, Kate, your eye shape is so pretty. I'm jealous of how well you wear liquid liner. Really? I don't feel that way. Thank you. You know who has an amazing eye shape and I'm, I'm well, I'm not going to touch my eyes tonight because, <laughs> because I actually have, um, uh, I'm gonna do it. You know who does an amazing eye look all the time and I wanna pull her eyes out of her head? Better off red. She's got like giant cat eyes naturally. And so then she does a, an actual cat eye and she looks like the prettiest feline I've ever seen. Ever. Rick Clark, get in the habit of using creator's links anyways. Yeah, exactly. Just use them. Just use them, damn it. Um, Yvonne Kusmano, how is everyone's Easter? I get to eat I get to eat too much again next Sunday for Greek Orthodox Easter. Um, I forgot yesterday was Easter until my parents sent us this. Well, let me damn it, where is it? It's right here. They sent us this pail, this Easter pail filled with Cheryl's cookies. You guys know about Cheryl's cookies. They're the best. And this is a, this is their buttercream frosted cutout cookie. This is a carrot. This is as Eastery as I get. Eating, <laughs> eating a cookie that's shaped like a carrot. Mmm. 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 It's so buttery and moist and flaky. Mmm. So good. Han Solo, better off red since you're also a YouTuber. Do you know if the links are working to give you guys credit? I'm looking. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, just use them anyway, I don't know. <laughs> yes, this cookie is delicious, everyone. 
you're correct. Um, <laughs> I just got it. My my uh, nightly text from Sarah, where she takes a screenshot of me opening my eyes and looking hideous. She always she always manages to get a screen grab of that and send it to me during my live stream. It's a joy and a pledge. <laughs> Gwyn's 54 it would be great if you and Better Off Red could do a live together separately like a FaceTime chat type thing. Funny you should ask because we have been talking about that. We're trying to figure it out because that would be so, so fun. Pat Noah's here. I made it. Live stream is so fun. Hi, Better Off Red. Um, Han Solo, I'm definitely using the links anyway. I was just wondering for y'all's sake. Yeah, I don't know. That's, um, I don't know about that news. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Catherine Puckett, anyone seen Mrs. America? Kate Blanchett, awesome, very well done, worth the wait for all the fierce ladies in the USA. I don't even know what that is, but all right. Have you, Emily, have you also been talking about Sarah Joe Exotic and Kate Carol Baskin? <laughs> oh, Colleen said she loves the merch and she just got some merch. Um, I am going to be having a sale on my merch coming up this weekend, which of course I will remind you about, but it's going to be a 10% off code, which is always helpful. You know what I mean? Just a little something, something. Uh, Renee Klein, Kate, when this friggin' pandemic is over, I will have Rachel, who is your daughter, send you her amazing oatmeal cookies or chocolate chip to die for. Mmm. Mmm. That sounds delicious. Let's see. Oh, Sherry Ford, happy freaking Monday. Just got home in time for some Kate happy hour. Venmo would be $50. Would, the question is, would it be a live stream if Sherry Ford wasn't here and sending either a super chat or a Venmo? Well, we'll never know because it hasn't happened. <laughs> no, no, it wouldn't. Thank you so much, Sherry. Um, scrolling up. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yes, sugar mama. Jenny with a Y. Sherry Ford is the patron saint of the good job gang. Oh, the, the good job gang. That's adorable. That's adorbs. Um, okay. So I have to tell you guys, so yesterday what we did, it's going to sound a little random, but I think you're going to like it. So get ready. We did an, a Ewan McGregor movie marathon because <laughs> who doesn't love Ewan McGregor? So it was Randy's idea, of course, who is he's the king of, you know, nerdy movie marathon compilation, you know, um, themed movie nights, things like that. So anyway, we started with Birds of Prey, which is the Harley Quinn movie that came out recently with um, Margot Robbie, who can do no wrong. Can we just talk about it? Her, like, first of all, I'm going to rip her face off, throw it on the ground and do a dance on it. Like, what is even happening? She has the most perfect lip shape. Like, as Harley Quinn, I don't know what she's wearing, but it's like the maddest, like almost dark maroon lip. But her lips look like someone just like drew them onto her face. I'm going to rip them off. Rip them off. She was, she, she was great. <laughs> Besides how she looks, sorry to just delve into that. That's not, that's not really fair. However, you look great, Margo, Margs. And she's also just super talented. I mean, is there anything she can't do? So you, you and McGregor, which I did not know, plays the villain in that. He is 
so like unexpectedly so because I didn't know what to expect, right? Like, and honestly, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a little critical. I have some opinions. Some people who don't get sarcasm have called me mean on my channel. But needless to say, I was going into it a little skeptical. That being said, he nailed it. Have you seen it? Now, I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Kate, I don't, I'm not a big superhero person. I don't care about DC Comics. Fine. I don't either. I do like Batman. I do, actually. But that's kind of where it ends for me. So because she's in that universe, I can kind of get down. But it is such a fun movie. It is so aesthetically satisfying. The, the fashion, the, the costumes in that movie are incredible. Ewan McGregor plays this villain, which I think is a difficult thing to do because he's comedic in so many ways. He's so like absurdly comedic that I found myself LOLing and I don't necessarily LOL the easiest. I just thought he was absolutely brilliant, making really strong, different choices but also being scary. It's hard when you're a villain to be like the funny villain and then maintain like a, a fear factor. He did it. Ewan McGregor, another person who's nailing it. Woo! Um, so anyway, I we watched that and we randy was like what we need to do is we need to theme what we're eating so there's a whole scene in there about a breakfast sandwich i'm sorry like saliva just spurt out of my mouth oh jensen oh my gosh my cousin jensen i like batman too she just sent 25 dollars. i think this is my cousin jensen i've never met anyone else named jensen <laughs> thank you cousin kissing cousins that's amazing. Um, I'm so happy she's here. Yeah, so I just have to say we had breakfast sandwiches while we watched the scene about breakfast sandwiches and it was so delicious. Admittedly, they were a little dry because we ordered them, um, but it was really fun. And that was like our like late lunch. And then, wait, is that everything I wanna say? Let me see what you guys have to say about everything I just said. Oh my gosh, Amber Unra, my son's name is Jensen. What? That's crazy. Let's see. Vivian Haig, love me you and... I'm sorry. There's some carbonation in the beverage. Excuse me. Love me some Ewan McGregor. I watched The Island yesterday for the hundredth time. The Island. Um, Michael Bay movie also has Scarlett Johansson in it. Oh, okay. You heard it. Um, Audra at home said, Kate, did you read my mind? I don't know about what specifically, but yes, I think I did. Um, more than just skin is here. Did you guys follow her on Instagram? More than just skin? Did you do it? Did you? Huh? 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 Gabrielle Strandquist said, or, uh, she said, literally no one doesn't love Ewan McGregor. That's true. That's a, that's a double negative that I can get behind. Okay, Lori's asking about good books. I got nothing. Moving on to more. We're not done with Ewan McGregor, okay? We're just on part one here. I'm just seeing what you guys said. <laughs> Michelle, you're watching Action Move. Oh, $10.34 from Lisa Janine Bilson. Oh my gosh, Lisa Bilson, thank you. She sent it Canadian. That's why it's a weird amount. Thank you so much. Also, if you haven't checked out Lisa's, Lisa Bilson's channel, please check her out. She's gorgeous. Um, I 
Oh, Audrey at home. Uh, she said birds of prey is what I was talking about today. That's crazy. Um, Jovi's mom. I arrived late to the party, but M M Mitch, oh, Michelob Ultra in hand. I saw in beginning subs can be greatsters. We could also go with youngins. Oh, okay. Um, do I watch action movies? Only when I'm made to. And, you know, sometimes I like them. So that's the answer to that. Okay. Oh, a girl like me with Chloe M is here. Kate, what eye color do you have on? I have, so I'm getting a lot of questions about it. I have my Glossier Skywash in the shade Pool which I will link in my description box. Do you know where to find the description box? Because if you don't, I literally break it down for you elementary school style in my latest video because I have found that a lot of people have no idea where the description box is. And I'm not gonna make you feel bad about that. I could, but I'm really nice, so I won't. You're welcome. Um. <laughs> Oh, Amber said it's the color pencil. No, just side note, it's not a pencil. Looks like a pencil. It's a doe foot applicator and it's a cream to matte eyeshadow. So good. Jennifer Gould, Kate, the husband in Texas who loves you is here under his own account. Well, who the hell is that? Wait, is his name David? Is that who sent me money that one time? I have no idea what's happening, but I, whoever's here, I'm glad you're here. And I can't believe that you're someone's husband and you just showed up to my live stream, but I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Mm, okay. Christian Milano, what's your favorite movie genre? I'm assuming musicals, no. No, um, I don't know if I have a favorite genre, movie genre. Do I? Do I? Horror. Oh, horror. Yeah, I do. I, I would say horror. I would say specifically, sorry. I take it back. I do know. Specifically 1970s horror. I really enjoy. I really, really enjoy. But speaking of musicals, the second movie in the Ewan McGregor, uh, wow, my roots are growing in. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Guys, it's going to get crazy. It's going to get crazy. I am going to be giving you a full on Joe exotic situation coming up and you're going to mm -hmm. like it. You're going to like it. So Christian Milano, Friday the 13th, those kind. Yes, I do enjoy those. I was speaking more of like Stepford Wives. The Exorcist, which is something that I'm going to talk about tonight. Jensen, <laughs> Jensen, burnt offerings, the old lady in the window. Yes, if you guys, oh my gosh. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Like kind of obscure, weird, creepy 1970s horror, like burnt offerings with Karen Black. I've been waiting for you, Ben. Have you seen it? You should see it. Um... Teresa Byers, Stepford Wives, what genre is that? Teresa Byers, excuse me? Girl, girl, girl. Stepford Wives is my favorite movie. I'm not gonna bore everyone because I've talked about it too many times, but it is like, I guess like sci-fi feminist, sci-fi slash horror slash feminist, I guess. It's like the, God the godmother of uh, Get Out. Oh, it is like the godmother of Get Out. Yes. So if you like Get Out, you should definitely see the original Stepford Wives, not the second, like the remake, because that's trash. It's trash, and I don't care what you say. So um, the second movie in the Ewan McGregor marathon, marathon I'm cockney now. <laughs> um, the second movie we watched was Moulin Rouge. And guys... When was the last time you watched Moulin Rouge? That's that's really the question of the night. If it was like around 10 years ago, you need to go watch it. You gots to go watch it because it is, now we had had some, we were having a good time. We had some drinks, 
we are huge Moulin Rouge fans. Like Randy loves Moulin Rouge. I was living for Moulin Rouge. My parents loved Moulin Rouge. It came out in 2001. Okay, 2001. So I that's when I graduated high school. So I was 17. And I was obsessed, obsessed with Moulin Rouge. Like I could do like a one woman show. We were both like those people like quoting Moulin Rouge. But we were watching it again as adults and we're seeing so many things that we never saw before. Okay. I almost died because you know when <laughs> It's when Ewan McGregor is singing your song, which is so good. He's so good in that movie. His voice is unreal. He's just, he's chef's kiss perfection. There's a, the moon is in the sky, okay? And there's like up, like an opera singer sort of backing him up, like in the background of all the vocals. And it is, it is actually, it's not Pavarotti, it's um, Placido Domingo. Placido Domingo. He's the moon. The moon is the opera singer. Like they've literally drawn a face on the moon and he's backing up Ewan McGregor singing your song. The moon is singing. The moon. That's so cute. It was so cute. I was like, I'm angry. It was like cute aggression. I was like, stop it. I can't take it. The moon is singing and I never knew. It like broke my heart into a million pieces and I could barely take life. I was just like, oh God, cute aggression. Okay, so if you didn't know that, you need to watch Moulin Rouge and look out for the moon singing. Does anyone, anyone, no one even knows what I'm talking about. No one even knew. Okay, Tanisha Hearn. I'm first time here to a live. Thank you for joining us. And then she says Brit and all about red. <laughs> or wait, unless you're talking about my top, which is all red. So thank you. But I think you're talking about better off red. And I yes, both those people are here. I'm not sure what's being said there. But there you go. Um, Watch Phantom of the Opera, Gerard Butler, Yummy. Ooh, didn't like that musical movie so much. No, no, wasn't into that as much. Um, I think I actually repressed it and I have, I have nothing to add except that I didn't like it. Um, I'm just looking at your comments. Kate, have you seen Moulin Rouge on Broadway? It was amazing. No, I have not. I have not. Um, everyone's asking if I've seen the Broadway version. Nope. Mindy, Mindy's saying, everybody give the video a thumbs up. Thank you so much, Mindy. Um, Deborah Mitchell, have you seen The Beguiled from 1971 with Clint Eastwood? Weird horror movie for sure. No, but I did see the, the remake of it. I actually didn't know that Clint Eastwood was in an original version of that, but I'm definitely going to have to watch it. Um, Christiane Milano, have you seen Midsummer? Creepy. Oh, girl, did we see Midsummer? I'll never recover. I loved it. We loved it. It guys give me a cult and i'm into it okay i'm i'm angry about it i'm disturbed i'm mad about it but i'm also not mad about it because i can't i can't stop listening to stories about cults um like it's it's one of the most fascinating topics ever ever case in point one of my favorite documentaries on hbo going clear about scientology and if you try to tell me it's not a cult. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, people are like going off about the retro movies. Okay. 
Stephanie Chun, did you see the anniversary Royal Albert Hall Phantom of the Opera Kate with Sierra Bajas and Ramin Karin Lu? It was so good. Guys, I have to admit something to you. At this point in my life, I am the least musical theater, musical theater person you've ever met. Everything you ask me, I'm going to be like, no, I haven't seen that. No, I, 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 I couldn't go. No, I can't afford Broadway tickets. No, I don't. I didn't see that show. Nope, 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 no. <laughs> I think, I think I've tapped out on musical theater. Like if someone's like, let's watch a movie musical. I'm like, no, <laughs> except for Moulin Rouge. That's okay. Cause it's, and Rocket Man. That's not the same. Those those aren't the same. Like those are like a different genre of movie musicals. <sighs> People are okay, we're getting into a horror movie conversation. I've got to go back up. Yes, I've seen Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Yes, Children of the Corn. Yes. Stephanie Chun, can we talk about musicals? I love musicals. No. Sorry. <laughs> no, we can. Maybe. You probably, you're probably gonna, I don't know. Try me. Just throw out a bunch of musicals and see if I like, <laughs> see if I like them. What about Sweeney Todd? Yes, yes, I do enjoy Sweeney Todd. I love me some Sondheim. Um, still think that Carol Baskin is literally like the modern day, um, Ms. Lovett, who is, you know, played, famously played by Angela Lansbury. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you haven't seen Tiger King, but I'm correct. Kimberly, Kate, not even Grease. Okay. I like some, I do. I do like some musicals. I do. Grease has a place in my heart, even though it's trash. I love it. And I could watch it all day long. <laughs> Kate Puglia. Kate, when your roots grow out, can you please do a Joe Exotic makeup tutorial? Please, please, you must. Mabes. Mabes. Did anyone, Jennifer Gould, did anyone see that video James Charles put out that got him into hot water and Patrick Starr did himself up as a glam kind of version of mullet ma'am from that? This comment is like 17 things. I, um, glam kind of version of mullet ma'am from the big cat zoo. Okay, Jennifer, don't pretend you don't know what Tiger King is. <laughs> That show about that mullet with that man and that big cat and that zoo. What's that called? You know it's called Tiger King. You just don't want to admit it. I also don't watch drama channels, so I'm, I'm sorry. I can't speak to it. <laughs> um, okay. So going back to Moulin Rouge, <laughs> we're going to talk more about Moulin Rouge. And yes, Joan M. mentioned the original Carrie, which is in like my top five favorite movies of all time, along with the original Stepford Wives. Um, oh my gosh, Kate Puglia said, yes, I know what you're talking about with the opera singing moon. She's the only one. Is she the only one who knew what I was talking about? Maricela Sales, Ugh, Salas, I don't know. I, you know what? I just decided I'm going to pronounce your, your name Maricela Salas, even if it's not that, because I really enjoy it. Favorite part for me of Moulin Rouge's Tango of Roxanne. So good. Um, couple, couple side notes about Moulin, Moulin Rouge. Um, I, I don't want to like be super, I don't want to hate on Nicole Kidman, but Nicole, Nicole, like, here's the thing. I don't need you to give me like an amazing Broadway vocal. Okay. I'm open-minded. BT dubs, you McGregor, <laughs> Christian Milano, girl can't sing. Okay. 
Ewan McGregor is not a trained singer either. You know what I mean? Like he, do he doesn't have like perfect control. He doesn't have perfect technique. He can sing really high and people who sing really high, we just automatically give them a bunch of credit even though they don't necessarily deserve it. Although he does because, because he does. But no, 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 I'm sorry. With Nicole Kidman, I just can't. Uh, upon um, further inspection, years later, at the age of 36, rewatching the movie, I think she's stunning, she's breathtaking, she's giving you a TB chic situation. She looks beautiful as she's dying. I cannot for a second believe that she is like this famous entertainer at one of the most famous music halls that ever were because literally she can't sing above a whisper. I'm supposed to believe that y'all didn't have any microphones back then and she's up there on this swing and she's like, a kiss on the hand may be quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. Like what? What, Nicole? I can't hear you because this was also like 1900. Everyone's screaming. People are like having orgies uh, like in the Moulin Rouge and then she's up there like whisper singing and I'm supposed to believe everyone can hear her and is obsessed with her? I'm not giving you a side eye. I'm giving you an under eye with a double chin. With a triple chin. No, I'm sorry. We all gave Nicole credit because she's gorgeous and like Nicole Kidman can't do anything wrong, but bye. No, no. No, no. Um, also, this is not Nicole Kidman's fault. However, her makeup like is really pretty, but they do so many, they do so many zoom ins in that movie. Like it's, it's very brutal. And they zoom in on her lips a couple times and you know, she's giving you like a bold red lip. But Nicole, and I kind of have this too, has those white girl lips where like, they literally like disappear into nothing. It's like, where is even my lip right here? Like it's gone. All of a sudden you have a lip and then there's a no lip. And so you have to like either create a fake corner of your lip or you've got to accept that there's just no lip there. So what they did was they created a, <laughs> a lip that didn't exist. And then when they zoom in, it looks terrible. It looks truly terrible. I like couldn't get over it. Randy didn't know what I was talking about, but I was like, okay, they needed to like cut, makeup, makeup. Can we get some, can we redo the lip? It's not good. No, it's not good. <sighs> okay, that's really all the notes I had on Moulin Rouge. I just wanted to just bash Nicole Kidman. No, I'm not done. I'm not done. The scene, and then I'm done. The scene where she's singing the medley. Wait, I have to remember. I put it on my Instagram story. She's singing the medley with Ewan, Ewan McGregor. And the line is, um, she, oh yeah. She's like, love is just a game. It's so, it's literally like, it's literally in a different key than he's singing. Like he's singing in the correct key. He stops and she's like, love is just a game. And it's, it's like one whole note and a half above where he is. And then I guess the editors were like, well, this sounds terrible, but let's just keep going. Let's put it in the movie. And then he picks up in the key he started in because he knows how to sing and she doesn't. And it's horrible. I want you to go and find that medley and watch it, okay? <laughs> Unacceptable. Blah, blah, blah. Unacceptable. <clears throat> oh, people are. What? It did feel good to get all that out about Nicole Kidman because I've been keeping it in and I feel I feel whole now. Would you go so far as to say that it feels so good inside? Okay, okay, so can you hear him? Do I have to repeat it? The best people in that movie are the Duke, played by Richard Roxburgh, 
and Jim Broadbent, who plays, um, I forget the, Zidler, Zidler. It's just, they're brilliant. And when they sing, when Jim Broadbent sings <laughs> like a virgin, <sighs> It's so good. And then here's the thing with Jim Broadbent. He's like a, a like a legit singer. He has this amazing opera voice. And then when he's like, the show must go on. The show must go on. He's just giving you like full on. And then Nicole Kidman's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not, I don't even know what she sings. I can't even do it. I, can't, I couldn't do it justice because I'd have to pretend that I can't sing, which I can do but I won't. Um, <laughs> so he's like saving, that's what I'm saying. You don't even know that he can sing that well. And then he like breaks out with this crazy opera voice and you're like, <sighs> what can he do? What can't he do? Okay, everyone needs, wants to hear Randy. That's what I'm saying. Randy, I can open the door so people can hear you better. No. I'll, I'll push it open a little bit. I'm getting, I'm getting so much feedback. We need to see Randy. Okay, everyone shut the hell up about Randy. Everyone shut up. Shut up. You're, he's not coming in here. Just me. Me is all you get to see. Okay. Yes. So anyway, the point is, Georgia, is that the bathroom? No, that's our kitchen. I don't, I don't stuff him in the bathroom during this, during these live streams. That's, that's the other room in our apartment. It's the kitchen. Um, Han Solo, Ali's son asked who you would have cast for Nicole Kidman's role. And I want to know too. Oh, I'm bad at this stuff on the spot. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, 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 I got nothing. I'll, I'll, let me think on it and I'll get back to you. Anyone, 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 not anyone, but yeah. Um, Nancy Braun is here. Hi, Nancy. Okay. Oh, when are we going to talk about The Exorcist? Okay, so that was sort of my Moulin Rouge commentary. Then we started to watch Velda Goldmine because, you know, Ewan McGregor, but it got really late and we didn't finish it. Um, but we're going to. I saw that when I was young too, it traumatized me. Um, only because, you know, I was, I was but a, ch I was but a child and I was, I was naive of the waves of the world and glam rock. I didn't know but I was really enjoying it. It just was like, you know, 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> um, Anna Cabell, Idina Menzel would have been great. Yeah. Sorry, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, <laughs> I didn't know if you meant then or now, like Moulin Rouge, like then? I'm trying to think who was famous then and who would have, oh, I don't know, just someone else, that's all. Um, Catherine Zeta-Jones, that's a good one. Yeah. Jamie K is all caps. Oh my God, I do not like Kadena Menzel either. <laughs> Jamie K, you sound psychotic, but I support you and I support what you said. Um. Why edits? <laughs> Kate Winslet, Hilary Swank, Renee Zellweger, Drew Barrymore, Natalie Mendoza, and Catherine Zeta-Jones were all up for Nicole's part of that helps your decision, Kate. Wow, Why edits has dug in to this. She knows, she knows her stuff. Well, from that list, I mean, I would choose Catherine Zeta-Jones. She's the only one of those people who can actually like sing incredibly well. She would have been great. Um, Renee Zellweger is great too. She, 
yeah, yeah. Either one of those people. That's good. Um. Sorry, I'm just trying to latch on to something. I have any idea what anyone's talking about. <laughs> um, okay. Mm -hmm. Westworlds. Off topic, Leslie Mills, but I'm finally watching Westworld season one and keep seeing you as Dolores. Oh my God. That is like the biggest compliment you could ever give me. I love Evan Rachel Wood in that series. I think she's absolutely incredible. I'm not a huge fan of the third season of it, uh, but the first and second seasons are absolutely worth watching. Even if you didn't move on to the third season, just watch the first and second seasons at least. So, so good. Okay, so we did watch, oh, my friend Heather Schrader is here. You should be, Dol you should be Dolores for Halloween. But also like, isn't that kind of a boring costume? Just like a blue sort of country dress with, with just like a natural dewy makeup look and just just like it basically be me with long blonde hair and like a prairie dress you get like the long blue skirt and then the white sort of blouse and a bandolier over it with like a six shooter it'd be dope oh yeah that's true that's true i could do like when she she turns into like a badass i could do that um but i do i do love her as dolores i think she's incredible we do have a um what are those things called? Those, what are those? A Funko Pop. A Funko Pop. We have a Funko Pop of Dolores. Um, Rant, Amber, Randy sounds like a New Yorker. He's not. <laughs> Randy's from the Midwest. Just Rand, like it. Yes, Randy's from Ohio, but thank you. Um, and then And then he can be Teddy. Known as Teddy, I'm sporting a head wound. Okay, um, moving on from Westworld. Um, Allie's son, what would you do without Randy, Kate? He answers all of your questions. Wow, that's like a sick burn, Allie. I would just be a noodle head up here just talking some nonsense on a live stream. I don't know what I would do without a man around. Like, I would just, like, talk about, like, makeup and, like, nonsense. Like, what would I even say? Um, okay. I know you didn't mean that as a burn, but it makes me laugh. <laughs> Heather, shh, women, sh women shouldn't speak. <laughs> okay, um... Uh, I haven't, I'm not caught up on Westworld from last no night, so I can't really speak to that. Um, Paula Taylor is here. Hey! Okay, so we did watch The Exorcist. And the reason we watched The Exorcist, we really, like, watched some iconic movies these last few days. There is a channel called Shudder. And we have a Roku. I'm sure it's probably available on Apple TV as well. And there is a free trial involved. It's like two weeks or a month or something like that. And it's an all horror movie channel. And so there's a series that's called Cursed Movies and it's a documentary series. So it's 30 minute episodes about movies from the past um, that were thought of as cursed. Like it had all these crazy things happen on set tragedy and all of that and the first one to kick it off is the exorcist i cannot recommend this series enough if you like horror at all even if you don't like horror it's just really interesting um we i we both seen the exorcist so many times but it just like never gets old and just watching devil possession movies like really aren't something that personally scare me a lot um but that movie does just because the whole thing is creepy. Like the way that people talk to each other, the way that a lot of the time during the dialogue, there's no music behind them speaking. There's just this very, it's, that's how I feel with the Stepford Wives as well. It was like this way of filmmaking in the seventies that just added to how creepy and weird it was. Um, 
Anyway, so we watched this documentary and I learned some things about The Exorcist that I never knew. One of them being that Linda Blair, which makes total sense, but I, I, it was interesting to hear her talk about it because she's interviewed in it. She was like badgered by all these like crazy religious nuts um, after the movie was released because they thought that she was the devil. Um, and it, it, like she, there's this point in the documentary where the, the interviewer says to her, you know, can you, can you talk about the bodyguards, you know, you had to deal with when you were, or that you had when you were young after the movie was released. And she very, like, without even skipping a beat is like, no, I won't talk about that. What else do you, what else do you want to ask me? Just like very cut and dry. I mean, she seems like a very damaged, um, pretty like hardened individual, which of course we all know Linda Blair mostly from as a child actor. Um, so to see her now, I mean, it's kind of unfair to judge from that, but it's not, you know, hearing her interviewed was a very sort of different picture of her than I had in, in my head as what she would be like when she's older. Um, she just, yeah, she just seemed really like she'd been through the ringer and, um, it's, it's feel awful. She's become like basically devoted her life to animal being an animal activist and caring for animals. And, um, which I think speaks a lot to, is there like a plane landing on our apartment building? Like what's happening? Um, I think it speaks to how like horrible she had it and what she had to deal with and how much trauma she had to deal with as a child. Jenna, $25, you are killing it tonight, Kate. You look gorgeous and you are so effing smart and funny. Thank you, cheers to Randy. Oh my gosh, what a sweet um, PayPal and a sweet message. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, that was sort of my biggest takeaway from the whole thing. They also kind of did this um, interesting but strange side plot where they basically showed like a present day exorcist and like him doing what he does with people on camera, which was fascinating and incredibly disturbing. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, I, I love the exorcist. I think, I think it is just like, I don't know why it doesn't get old because you would think it's so specific. It would get old, but it doesn't. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, yes. Also, interesting to note about The Exorcist, um, there's a killer in the movie and no one knew that he was a killer. He's in the scene where they basically, um, they give Linda Blair a spinal tap and she's, I, I think, and he's one of the techs. And basically in this documentary, they talk about how he, he ended up, you know, they ended up finding like a dead man in his apartment um after like a few weeks and so it's like this whole sort of bad juju vibe that the exorcist had going on like a couple of the cast members died like right after it filmed um the set caught on fire and everything was damaged except for the room where linda blair like you know all the exorcism happens and stuff like that just really 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 bizarre interesting things um, bye Renee. Bonnie said Linda Blair went through hell in her life after that movie. I can't even imagine. Um, Heather asked, do you have any personal ghost or supernatural stories? I do, but I only have a couple. Um, I don't have that many. I, I haven't had that many. But I will say, for some reason, watching The Exorcist this time really creeped me out. And I had to turn the lights on when I went to the bathroom, like twice the other night, because I don't know, again, it wasn't, it wasn't as much when she's possessed that scares me, because it, you know, to me, it's just, it, it's creepy, but it's so over the top. Um, but it's more just like, 
the lead up to it and like her, you know, playing with the Ouija board. And when she comes down the stairs and she like in the middle of Ellen Burstyn's party and she pees on the floor and she's like, you're going to die up there. Like all that stuff is just scary as hell. Um, catnip four, the male medical orderly tends to be the villain in numerous movies. Huh? Interesting. Um, why edit said poltergeist was similar. If I remember correctly, with a lot of strange coinky dinks happening to people involved with the movie slash set that might actually be involved in the series. I'm not sure. It's episode three. Oh, it's episode three. <laughs> Peanut gallery back here told me it's episode three. Um, let's see. Maricela Salas, would you mind doing a live discussing which movie was best, original versus remake, like Stepford Wives and so forth? That's a good idea. I, you know, I was doing some really specific live streams, like themed live streams, like I did my Swayze Crazy after I did my Dirty Dancing, and I really enjoy those. But what I found is that, like, overall, I try to figure out what most people enjoy. And my live streams that are more generic like this, where I don't sort of choose a theme, tend to be, they're, uh, they're viewed more. So I think people like a more like general situation. Um, so that's kind of why I went back to that, but I'm not against occasionally doing like a theme. <clears throat> Heather, my friend Heather, Kate is always for the original movie. Yeah, I'm not a big remake person. The only thing recently that I've seen that was remade that I totally am behind, as well as hoo-ha over here, <laughs> Randy in the next room, is um, High Fidelity. High Fidelity remade into the new, the new Hulu series that it is with Zoe Kravitz is, I know I brought this up several times and you're probably getting sick, getting sick of me saying it, but I don't care because it's that good. So good. Um, also, I might <laughs> lose some subscribers here, but also I have a Ouija board right up here. I'm looking at it. Hey, Ouija board, mystifying Oracle, Parker brothers, or who made it? I don't know. Anyway, we ordered one a few years ago. Um, and we actually tried it on Halloween, like in the apartment. I also had I my dad and I used to like, do that when I was younger. Um, for fun. And I just always enjoyed a Ouija board. <laughs> What can I say? I'm goth. I'm I'm an in an inside goth girl. I know you can't tell by what I'm wearing, but I actually am all about just skulls and horror. Um, nothing ever happened to me. And I will tell you, when Randy and I did it a few years ago in the apartment, there was we got nothing. We were just it was dead. It was just like we were sitting there for like an hour, just like nothing was moving. What are you gonna, what are you gonna do? Kendall M, who decided to market that shit to children? I don't know, but I sure did have a damn good time as a child playing it. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> um, Georgia Colster, Kate, you should subscribe to the Grim Life Collective. They are the YouTubers that do videos of grim type stuff. They are great. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, Jamie K, I had an overly Christian ex-boyfriend and I got rid of my tarot cards. I regret it to this day. I loved playing with those cards. Jamie, that is a sad story. Go get yourself, order some tarot cards, stat. In fact, I have a great place. <laughs> I already have a great place in mind for you. Um, Catnip 4, I always wanted a Ouija board as a child and my parents wouldn't buy me one. They would not buy me an eight ball either. Okay, that's intense. Um, Grace Maltese is here. Oh, hey. Um, am I in, Heather said, am I into tarot? 
Yeah. Yeah. Why not? You know, the only thing about tarot that scares me is I just don't, like, at this point in my life, I just don't want to hear anything I don't want to hear. You know what I mean? Like, you know when you were a kid and it didn't matter, you're like, you could, let's, I could hear terrible things. Like, I don't care. I'm 15. Well, now it's like, I don't know. Like, what if I find something out I don't want to find out? It's upsetting. But I mean, no, I, I do, I do like tarot, tarot cards and all that stuff. Um, Jennifer Gould says you don't buy your own tarot cards. Oh, oh, Emily Troche, $10 PayPal. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, you don't buy your own tarot cards. Well then, okay. Who, who has to buy, you have to, do you have to have someone else buy them for you? What's the tarot card rule? Well, how does anyone ever get any tarot cards then? You just have to wait around waiting for someone to gift you some tarot cards? What? I don't understand. I don't understand. Oh, Jennifer Gould is yelling at me in all caps. You do not buy your own tarot cards. Okay. Okay, Jennifer Gould. Okay. I love when people write in all caps. I don't... Sometimes I think people don't understand how actually terrifying that looks in the chat. <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry. You're yelling at me through written word. Okay, Jennifer Gould's calm down now. There you go. You can buy for each other, but you never buy your deck. Okay, 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 okay. Uh... Whew, glad we made it through that. Martine Desjardins. My uncle went missing in the Korean War and my grandma relied on her board. He came back and Ouija was telling her he was going to come back. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Eve said, I have bought all of my own decks. So many great indie decks out there now too. Okay, well, we've got a whole argument now about buying decks of tarot cards. Who knew? Who knew that we'd come to this point? This took a turn. Took a turn. K.L. Smith, how young are you? Well, that's the correct that's the correct way to ask that question. Well, um, I okay, I'm 36. That's how young I am. Um, people are saying you can purchase your own decks. There's a wow. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to look into this. Oh, sorry, I got, I got, I'm getting like a te text on my phone. Um, Stephanie Chun said, I don't care for horoscopes, but I got into it after watching you, Michelle, and Better Off Red's live stream in NYC. Wow, we are very persuasive. We're very persuasive. What can we say? Um, Jennifer Gould, I'm yelling to be seen. Well, stop it. <laughs> I know why you're yelling. <laughs> Anytime someone uses all caps in a the chat, they're like, why haven't you said my comment? I'm yelling. I know why you're yelling. Um, Heather, Heather said, we all just want you to say youngish. Yes, I'm 36 years youngish. Youngish. Elizabeth Schroeder, I made it. Yay. Hey, Kate. Well, hey. Heather, my, my friend Heather, I'm talking to her right now. Heather, you missed the whole Moulin Rouge conversation where I tore uh, Nicole Kibben to shreds. I know how much you loved her in that. Sorry. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> okay. So, great. The other thing I feel like I need to tell you that I watched before we wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. Oh, Heather said that's fine. Just leave you and alone. Oh, girl, you missed the whole you and McGregor conversation. Like the whole thing has been about you and McGregor, basically, and he can do no wrong. Um, we also watch Inner Space, guys. Guys. 
Inner Space was a VHS that I owned. We, we didn't own a lot of VHS tapes when I was a child, but I don't know how we got that one, but we had it. And I wore that out. Inner Space. I'm talking about Dennis Quaid. I'm talking about Meg Ryan. I'm talking about Martin Short. Randy actually never seen the whole thing, so we watched it, and it was so fun. And... Martin Short still is just like one of the funniest people I've ever seen. When he sings um, Twisting the Night Away with Dennis Quaid inside of him, in a spaceship inside of him, don't get weird. It is, it, it's just, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Heather, Johnny, <laughs> Heather's husband, Johnny, is feeling this inner space. Oh, Lon White. Oh my God, I forgot about Inner Space. We had that on VHS. It's so good. Also, I recently learned that Dennis Quaid has lost a damn, his damn mind. He's lost his mind, just like Randy. Why? I'm so disappointed. I had the biggest crush on Dennis Quaid, but now it's gone. Um, oh, and that is the movie where Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan met. Meg Ryan, such a cutie patoot so cute giving you a hairstyle that if anyone wore it now you would be like that is the most hideous thing i've ever seen in my entire life but she could wear just like a rag tab rag tag paper sack she could wear just a burlap situation and just be so cute <sighs> so cute what happened meg and then i saw her in the west village like a decade ago and she looked like a completely different person why, 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 why? <sighs> Amber said, probably my favorite live stream yet. Love the Randy commentary. Don't get any ideas. Don't, don't influence him. <laughs> you look amazing, Kate. Thanks for the laughs. Good night, everyone. Good night. Um, Vivian Haig, Dennis Quaid, what happened to him? Meg Ryan broke his heart crazy. She was so cute. Leslie sent me $10 and she sent me some dancing people emojis. Thank you, Leslie. Um, you just need to Google Dennis Quaid. I, we can't, I can't get into it. It's, it's a whole, you'll see. Just look it up. Um, yes, I am going to wrap it up, wrap it up. But thank you all for being here. If you could please so kindly give this a thumbs up. Um, <clears throat> also, check out the video that I just put out. It's my empties video. Which I've never done an empties video. So I put that up yesterday. Be sure to check that out. I'm going through all of the products that I, you know, used up. It's a lot of skincare. Um, and everything will be in the description box. Check out my merch. Check out my youngish merch. Check out my back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up, back, back, back it up, back, back, back. merch. Oh, Yvonne Cusmano sent me ten dollars over PayPal. Thank you, uh, guys. Coming through in the last couple minutes. Um, Randy is now putting um, my Venmo and PayPal information up there, and uh, which is always an option as well. Instead of super chat, I want to thank you guys so much for all your support for being here. Um, and I do this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So be there or be square. Oh, Elizabeth Schrader just sent a, Schroeder sent a super chat, $10. Thank you, Elizabeth Schroeder. Still loves, a, still love me a super chat. You know what I mean? Like they're bright, they're fun. They light up, everyone can see them. Jerry Morrison, thank you. Have a great night, Kate and Randy. Fun night as always. See you on Wednesday. Yes, yeah, see you guys on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Cheers. Mm. Okay, bye.